Welcome back. Chris here with another repair today. We're taking a look at this Asus Transformer TF300T tablet with docking station and we're going to replace the power button on it today. Basically what we have to do to get to this is first disconnect the docking station by just unlocking it up here and we'll get that out the way. And there are no screws on this at all. This is one of those pop fit kits. And I actually have the new button over here. You can see it in the plastic bag. The power button on this includes the volume up and volume down buttons as well. It's all kind of one little harness. Uh, and these are actually the only hardware buttons on this entire unit. This is a 10.1 inch screen on this tablet. Uh, I will go into a little bit of a mini review when it's done. Now this particular unit actually belongs to my mother. This was her first tablet. She's actually upgraded to one that has uh, cellular connectivity in it so she can take it elsewhere with her besides her house because she actually enjoys using it that much. And uh, she's always complained about the power button. Maybe I can demonstrate it, but the power button's on top here and you can see it's, it's not doing anything. You have to really hold it in at just the right angle or use the tip of your finger to do it. Uh, it doesn't have as much play in it like it used to. Whereas the up and down buttons on the top here, you might be able to hear in the mic, they have that kind of like clicky, tactile feel to them where the power button doesn't. It's kind of uh, sunken in a little bit and it's, it's quite difficult to push. And, I've, I've done some research on this and apparently that's actually a common problem with this. So if you're watching this video, it's because you've encountered the same problem. Well, to get in this thing, you need to have uh, some special tools, I would say, like the iFixit uh, opener tool, but they don't have to be iFixit brand, obviously, but you do need one of these plastic opening tools with these uh, little plastic scoops on it. And the reason why you wanna try to use a plastic tool it's because you don't want to dig into this soft plastic with a metal tool. That will ruin it. So, and mind the smudgy fingerprints on here, you know, these, these devices tend to pick up fingerprints pretty quickly, as you may already know. So I'm gonna actually pull my chair up over here. And uh, we're gonna use two of these tools. Now, I did already look up a guide on how to do this because I don't want to go ahead and ruin this tablet. Um, and I will mention that I have an anti-static mat here. I don't have my wrist strap on because I'm actually barefoot and I'm grounded out against this mat and I will not be moving around during this recording. And in fact, I can actually go ahead and touch my little metal power supply over here and just kind of ground myself out, you know, if I do move. But generally, you know, I, I recommend wearing the strap, but for the sake of keeping it out of frame, I won't be doing that tonight. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start with the opening tool along the top of this case. And we're actually going to use two of them. And uh, I'll point out the charging port is on the bottom of this. It doesn't take a standard um, USB you know, mini port on here. It's just one of their proprietary Android ports. Kind of very reminiscent of the older Apple ports. But anyway, we're going to open this towards from the top of the case up here and the side of the case, and we're gonna work our way down towards the bottom. Uh, the plastic around the bottom is a little thinner than it is at the top, so we'll have to be careful around that charging point. Uh, charging port, I should say. But anyway, these, uh, these tools up here just slide into the top. I'm gonna to try to see if I can uh, reposition my camera here just a little bit and get a closer shot of this without having to bust out the macro lens. All right, now, if I go ahead and start putting this in here, I'll get close to the camera here. You can actually see this tool will go right in. And you can see it start to open up right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and work myself around the case like that and just carefully popping this open. You can almost hear it snap as you do it. Once you release the tension in this, it should be pretty easy. So to save the filming here, I'm gonna go ahead, open this all around, and we're gonna 
come back to a point where I have a little bit of it open here. Now right here, you can see this is the uh, micro HDMI port, which the top half of it just juts out a little further past the plastic. So you'll actually have to snap that right around. If I come around here, you can just barely see that metal shining back on the light here. And you'll just pop that right over. I'll also point out that you'll need to remove the SD card that's on the side of this. All right, once you get around the side of the case to a certain point, the bottom on this one actually just unsnapped in its own. So you can see the back cover just easily came right off of that. And that was actually surprisingly very, very easy to get into. At this point, there are several things we can do here depending on what we need to do. Right now, I'm just replacing the power button assembly, which is up here. And maybe I can get closer and show you. It's this little gold flex that's right here. The volume up and down button is right here. The power button is right up on top here. And just clicking that with my finger, I could see that it's it's gone. There's no there's no give to that. Now I'll also point out in here that there is a physical on and off switch according to the breakdown manual that I came across. And unfortunately, my eyes are having a hard time finding it right now, but there should be a little on-off switch, which appears to be around here someplace. Well, this is actually, there's a reset button that's kind of sunken in over here that you can access from outside the tablet with a pen or like a little pin or something. Um, that's not what we're looking for. What we are looking for is right here. You might be able to make out the word off. There's a little slider switch right here that we're going to click the off. And that's going to prevent this tablet from turning on if this thing actually shorts out. Um, and there's this little rubber mat that if we pick it up, we can see it's uh, kind of just held in place here by this warranty void seal. And I'm going to actually just lift this right off the unit very gently. There's actually a processor underneath it there. If you can kind of see it. So this is some kind of a heat sink material. I'm not really sure what this serves, what the purpose of this material serves as. But we don't need to go too far with it because the connector's right here. And uh, it looks like it has a some kind of a clasp at the back end of it. I'm going to have to put this down for a second here and figure out how this comes apart. But most of these connectors have some kind of a you know, piece that either lifts up or, yeah, okay. It just lifts up from the back. Again, I, I can't really sure how, how well you can see that or not. But that little white connector that's right here under that mat with the cable coming out from underneath it. That little white connector has a black tab in the back of it that gets lifted straight up and that's going to allow this to come out just like that and you can see I have it lifted and there's adhesive on the back side of this and we're just going to go ahead and peel this right off very gently and replace it with the new one so I'm going to go ahead pause the camera again and slowly lift that piece out to replace it and here it is you can actually see that the little tactile dome uh, piece on top has just completely slid right off and judging by the presses on it you can actually see it's kind of dented in really kind of funky and everything whereas the, the newer one here I'll take out the little bag and I'll show you the difference once it gets out the bag now I did buy this on eBay it was seemed like that was the only place I could find it that had it in stock uh, I fix it didn't have it and this is actually a refurbished unit so this is going to have new tactile buttons put on but you can actually see here's a new button and it does have quite a nice like little click to it so that's going to really make the difference on here and you know installation is just the reverse this is just going to go back in its place and just pop right on there 
Now there is a little bit of the sticky left from the original glue that was holding us in place, but it's basically double stick tape. You know, if, if you find that your new unit isn't sticking in that well, you can always just take some just regular, you know, scotch double stick tape, if you will, and just cut little pieces of it and just kind of hold it in place there. And that's what I may am having to do here, but so far it looks like it's sticking. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just lay this right in place and just reconnect the connector. One of the things you're going to want to do is make sure that these little plastic nubs that are sticking out actually um, fit all the way into the the um, flex connector we'll call it, the little flex strip. And you could just use again one of these little spudger tools and just like gently just push all around and just make sure it's seated incorrectly. And I'm also uh, kind of just, you know, just rubbing it very lightly here just to make sure that the adhesive takes. And just, um, just you know, testing it out with the end of this tool, you can actually feel that's got a really nice clicky action. Maybe if I get it close enough to the mic, you'll hear that clicky too. So that's all really there is to it, to replacing that. Now you can go further if you wanted to replace the battery. Um, that's going to be a little bit deeper in here. I, I'm not sure exactly where it is because I didn't really look it up because this battery actually has a pretty good life on it. I think it's actually this darker mat here in the background because if you look and follow the charger up it goes underneath this uh, other mat here and actually if I line the case up you can see that that copper bit there lines up on the top there so I'm assuming that's some kind of a heat sink and you know I'll make a note while I have this open and you can look at the back of this this is basically a screen with a bunch of electronics and the battery just stuffed on the back of it. But when you think about all the things these tablets can do, it's very remarkable. I mean, this is, you know, an overglorified smartphone, if you will, but it's kind of not. You know, a smartphone, when you look at it, there's a bunch of uh, components in there that are covered over by those metal, uh, uh, metal caps just to keep it uh, from getting any kind of interference with the radio frequencies and whatnot. Whereas this, since there's no cellular in it, it's just bare circuit boards almost. So it's almost like somebody taking your computer monitor and slapping a motherboard on the back of it and everything's all inclusive in this one unit. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and just, you know, clean this up just to make sure there's no gunk around the outside edge here because, you know, from usage, that's like you can see over here, all this stuff just cleans right off. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean the uh, other side of this case as well, just to make sure this is all nice and clean and begin the processes of putting this back together, which is, you know, as easy as just snapping it back together, more or less. Uh, we're gonna start at the bottom with the charger end over here and just snap it right in place. And also, don't forget to turn the power button back on, the little switch that we had shut off. You wanna make sure that's on. You don't wanna get this thing all put back together just to find out you forgot to do that. And uh, if you want to play a cruel trick on somebody, of course, you can always take their tablet apart and shut that switch off, put it back together. Then they won't think it works anymore. Then you can convince them it doesn't. And then uh, maybe they'll give it to you. And then you can just turn it back on again. No, don't do that. That's mean. And that's it. I went ahead and used some cleaner and just clean this unit up. Um, I also used an anti-static brush like one of these just to clean around that edge, just to you know get all the crud off of it. Because that does build up on any of these devices. If you want to see crud, take your computer mouse apart. That's really fun to do. But yeah, anyway, you can see just the slightest touch of that button turns this thing right on. You push it again, it goes right out before you really had to mash this thing down hard. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below where I found that piece. Um, I'll also give you a link to the iFixit article on how to take the thing apart because they go into detail how to take the battery out. Um, they sell the tools, they sell the kits, uh, you know, in, in various forms, I should say, and then they also have the parts. They didn't have the piece I needed for that uh, button, but it was X amount of money on eBay with the shipping versus this, you know, a cheaper price on iFixit, but you had to pay shipping. So I'm sure it would have worked out both the same. But while I have these here, I'll, I'll do a little mini review since I think this is a pretty neat kit. So you dock this into the docking station here and it does fold and you have this nice little compact unit, you know, very reminiscent of a laptop, which I like, but 
unlike a laptop, you can still separate it and take the tablet portion with you if you want and not take the keyboard. But with the keyboard, there's actually an extra battery inside this thing. And with the combination of the two, you get a whole 15 hours of uh, lifetime with this thing, which is really neat. Plus, you have a full-size USB port in the side over here. You also have the SD card slot. So not only do you have the micro SD on the side of the case, but you have a full-size SD here. And I could think of things like my tablet, or I should say my camera here. Let's say you take this with you on vacation and you take your, your camcorder. You can take your camcorder's SD card out, plug it in here, and then use this to upload your video, which is kind of neat. Um, plus the extra battery life is nice. Now, I did have a little bit of a problem when I first got this in my hands, um, charging it. Um, a little side note uh, before I get into that. My mom who uses this has a bit of a vision problem, so she has to get this close up to her face to use it. And um, that's actually why she likes it so much, because it's something that she can actually use. She hasn't used a computer in a long, long time, so when she bought this for herself, just you know, on, on being skeptical to see if it would actually work for her or not. She found out that it did and loved it. But because she has to get so close, she doesn't actually use the keyboard. It just happened to have come with it. Um, that being said, it's basically sat in the closet for a while and we're actually cleaning it off to give it to my dad since she has a new one. And he's going to use the keyboard because he does have a computer and you know he's a little old, old school, so it's gonna be easier for him to use the trackpad in the uh, keyboard more more than likely um, but because that hasn't been charged I figured I would charge it up for him you know I already cleaned the tablet off I they didn't have the SD card before so I went out and got them that because uh, the pictures they were taking were just storing on the thing and whatever so when I plugged it in initially I plugged it into one of these charger doctors just to see what the current was you know drawing on it you know and since I have it anyway well, it wasn't charging the docking station, and I'm like racking my brains out trying to figure out because obviously the port that charges is what hooks up to the docking station, and then you plug the charger in here, and I'm going, what the heck's going on? So I kept reading online, and they kept calling it a 15 volt charger, and I'm like, it's USB, it should be 5 volt, how is it 15 volt? Well, this only allows a uh, 3.5 to 7 volt output on it, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> or should, I should say it only reads 3.5 to 7 volt. I'm sure it'll allow higher voltages to go through it, but USB by default is 5 volt. And what was going on was there's actually, it's a smart charger. The charger is a 15 volt charger, but it also supplies 5 volt depending on which device you have plugged in. I think it charges the tablet at 5 volt, oops, and it charges the docking station at 15 volt because it has to charge this battery and then trickle charge the tablet battery. So that kind of makes sense. But the reason why it wasn't charging is because there's no data connection. I'm pretty sure this doesn't allow connectivity. I've never actually hooked it to the computer to see or not, but I think it only allows a power connection, not data connection. Or if it does, it doesn't, you know, it's, it, it, just, it just didn't allow the tablet to see the charger hooked up to it properly. So the charger was only outputting five volts and it wouldn't charge the docking station. But after like pulling my, my hair going, what the heck's going on? I finally took this off the charger and plugged it directly in and it started charging the docking station. And it actually, the battery in the tablet will reduce in life before the battery in the docking station does. And when it gets to a certain point, the docking station actually charges the tablet. And I think that's why they basically did that. But it was just weird seeing one of those USB chargers be dual voltage. It just was new on me. And uh, yeah, I, I, you can kind of see here, one of the things I wanted to point out is the tablet is a bit top heavy. So when you have it in its furthest back open position like this, it does want to kind of teeter back on you. But if you're you know typing on it, it's not such a big deal. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is for this video. That was actually a really easy fix. And my dad's going to be really happy with this, and I'm glad I was finally able to get that in so he can have himself a little tablet to play with. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, I would really appreciate you subscribing. That's how I can build this channel and reach a wider audience. If you did already subscribe, thank you very much, and stay tuned for another video.